Hey everyone, if we haven't met yet, my name is Morgan and I'm so happy that you are here, especially since it's our last training day of the month. I know, right? All month long, we've been training for a 5K and even though we're not training for a real race, we've definitely followed a plan to go stronger in our relationship with God. And we for sure put in some serious practice. You might say that we've been rocking our commitment. And do you remember what commitment means? Do you? Right. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. Can you say that with me? Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. Right. Good job. You know, in James 1 verses 17, we read that every good and perfect gift is from God. It's true. Everything we have comes from God. Our strength, our love, our commitment. We owe it all to Jesus. Oh, we owe it all to God. We've experienced God's kindness for ourselves and every day we can choose to give some kindness away to others. And you know, I am so thankful that I can trust God no matter what. And because of that, I know I can follow God and live His way every day. Why don't we get started today with some worship? So let's go. for me you're good you hold my future you're working all the time you're the mountain mover from sunrise to sunset till the sun comes back up again you're by my side you started a good work in me i know that you will complete it you will see And 
strength training. <laughs> and even training my brain for a month. It's like training has been my life. Like I thought about this race constantly when I decided what to eat. Mm. Mm. Oh, when I chose how to spend my time. From morning until night, I kept my mind on the race. That's what you gotta do when you truly commit to something. Like, you've gotta live like it's important to you. Today's story is about a woman who lived her whole life that way. I'll see you when you get back. I've gotta get this party started! <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 12. Verses 41 through 44. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey the week before Passover, the crowds were excited. Hosanna! 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 All week, the religious leaders sent men to try trapping Jesus with trick questions. Teacher, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Every time, Jesus gave a wise answer that caught them off guard. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give back to God what belongs to God. Urgh. Jesus knew the religious leaders were so puffed up with pride, they didn't want people to listen to anyone else. Jesus even warned the crowds about them. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They love to have the most important seats. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. One afternoon, Jesus and his disciples visited the temple. They sat down to rest for a moment across from the box where people came to put money they offered to God. Perhaps the disciples, mostly poor fishermen themselves, were impressed by the rich men giving gifts. Check out his robes. I think they actually might be silk. Jesus watched the rich men dropping handfuls of gold coins into the box. He knew that like the religious leaders, they were proud to show how important they were. Check this out, world. Money, money, money. Always sunny in a rich man's world. Uh. Even though these wealthy men were giving impressive amounts of money, Jesus knew they had so much, this was easy for them. Simply a drop in the bucket. Huh, she looks a little out of place. The next person in line clearly wasn't wealthy. In fact, her patched robe showed she didn't have an extra cent to spare. A widow, probably. At that time, if a woman's husband died, she had no way to earn money and often had to live on next to nothing. Two pennies? How's that gonna help anyone? Jesus was watching the woman too, but he saw something different, something more. Come over here, all of you. The disciples gathered around Jesus. What I'm about to tell you is true. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. <gasps> Jesus' friends tried to sort it out. Um, excuse me, pennies versus gold? You couldn't buy an order of fish nuggets with that. Jesus knew what his disciples were thinking. The others all gave a lot because they are rich, but she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Oh. When you put it like that. The rich men, like the religious leaders, were concerned with what things looked like on the outside. They didn't want to give in a big way that might force them to change on the inside. But the poor woman, who had almost nothing, chose to give everything. And Jesus saw her heart and knew that her pennies were worth far more than the rich men's gold.
Nobody else thought a poor woman giving two small coins was a big deal. But Jesus saw the truth. Other people gave because they were rich. This woman gave everything she had because she was putting her trust in God. She was living for Him. And that's something to celebrate. <laughs> Living for God is about more than giving money. It's about trying to include God in every part of your day. It's about asking yourself before every choice you make, does this honor God? I could copy my friend's homework or do the work myself, like I'm supposed to. I'm gonna do the work. Or ask yourself, does what I'm about to do show love to others? My friend didn't get me anything for my birthday. Should I get even by giving her nothing? Or should I forgive her? Well, I did already wrap it. She's gonna love it. <laughs> if you ask yourself those questions, it'll help keep your mind on God. It'll help you think about how Jesus lived and loved others. This probably won't become a habit overnight. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Practice living for God. The more you practice asking yourself, does this honor God? And does this show love to others? The more natural it becomes. It feels good to commit to something and stick to it. I'm glad I committed to running a 5K. I feel stronger and healthier and between you and me, I think I'm going to start training for another one. But first, we celebrate. <laughs> See you around. The Bible story that we learned about today is a great example of how to live for God. The widow that we learned about, she gave everything she had because she wanted to honor God and show how much she loved Him. And remember, Jesus Himself gave us the best example of what it looks like to live God's way, to love God and love others with everything we have. It's just like our bottom line for today. Practice living for God. Can you say that with me? Ready? Practice living for God. Right, exactly. We can live for God every day when we put what we believe into action. So before you do something, first stop and ask yourself if it will honor God. Look at the way that Jesus lived and treated people and follow his example. After all, the way that we live our lives can help others see how much Jesus loves them too. You know, we've got a really good plan to follow as we grow stronger in our relationship with God. One, we can take time to hear from God by reading the Bible or maybe a God time card or other devotional. Two, we can pray and spend time connecting with God anytime, anywhere. And three, we can talk to others about what we believe and ask questions. And all of this helps us live our lives in a way that honors God. It helps us do what matters most, love God and love others. Why don't we pray together today? God, thank you so much for everything that we learned today and this entire month, really. God, we pray that you would help us learn about commitment and that we would commit to still learning and striving to be in a better relationship with you. God, we pray with everything we learned today, would you help us live that out? God, let us be reminded of how much you love us. And we love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And parents, we highly encourage you to print out the parent guide that you can find on our website. But if you don't wanna do that, that's okay. You can also just press pause on the next few slides. But other than that, we'll see you next week. Bye.